Hello. Uh, in this session, we want to talk about why Al-Anon? Why do you keep hearing us talk about the importance of getting into your own 12-step program? Right. And so uh, let me tell you some of the advantages. Uh, too few people get involved in their own therapy, but if you have your own therapist, you may think, mistakenly, that you don't need Al-Anon. Mm. Uh, Al-Anon is not therapy. Mm -hmm. And yet True. it's therapeutic. And uh, when you're facing something that is uh, challenging, that it's, uh, it frightens you. You see your loved one uh, saying they're going to do this or that. You know that it's not consistent with 12-step mm -hmm. principles. It be, it's so compelling to try to tell them they're doing it wrong. Mm. And starting to tell them what to do is going to initiate a rebelliousness in them. You're going to have a mm -hmm. fight on your hands. And a sponsor, your sponsor, um, is who you call rather than telling them why don't they call their sponsor or they need to go to a meeting or any of that kind right. of stuff. You, you say, I'm calling my sponsor. I see this happening in you. You know, this is the behavior. This right. is uh, what observable facts. This is what I've seen. And now this is what I'm going to do about it. I'm calling my sponsor. And you let it go. So let me ask you this, though. Uh, what exactly is Al-Anon? What do you do? Um, what's a typical meeting like? Um, you know, what's the program like in general? Yeah. Al-Anon is f for people who have a qualifier, an addict or alcoholic, and the first step is admitting that you are powerless over them drinking or using. Mm, mm -hmm. You can't make them drink or use, and you can't keep them from drinking or using. Um, so right. it's... It's nice to know that you can't make them drink or use. So Al-Anon, the first thing is, you know, you have an addict or an alcoholic yes. in your life, and they are an offshoot <clears throat> of AA. Yes. So AA was founded in the 30s, approximately. And uh, when they found that a lot of the spouses wanted to attend, and that wasn't really working too well. So Al-Anon arose out of that, but they do follow the same 12 steps uh, in their own way. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different, but there are 12 steps that, that you work through. In other words, that you address each one of them. Um, and that's what you're talking about. The first step being I'm powerless yeah. over the addiction of my loved one. Mm -hmm. A nice history portrayed uh, in film is when love is not enough is the Lois Wilson story mm -hmm. that Lois Wilson was Bill Wilson's, the, one of the founders of AA, right. his wife and how Al-Anon got started. So it's it started way at the beginning, almost uh, right parallel with the AA program. And that one uh, features Winona Ryder and Barry Pepper. It's uh, mm -hmm. professionally made, a very nice movie. Yeah, yeah, it's a good movie. So mm -hmm. how do you even find an Al-Anon meeting? I mean... Going online. Okay. Uh, you look for Al-Anon and just uh, put your your search engine, whichever search yeah, engine of choice, and zip code. Yep, and it'll just come right up. There's uh, a central office. Uh, meetings are listed, mm -hmm. uh, so it's they're easy enough to find. The whole twelve step program. One of the traditions. There's twelve traditions as well as the twelve <coughs> steps, and one of the traditions is that this is about. Uh, attraction, not promotion. So mm -hmm. you don't see advertisements uh, right. because it'd be against the tradition. Yeah, so you're not going to go in and have everybody really selling you on on their program. Uh, what are you going to see? So let's say you find a meeting that you're going to break the ice and actually attend, which mm -hmm. is, is a little scary given you don't know anybody there, most likely. So you walk in. What, what can you expect? Well, from any meeting, you would expect sobriety and by sobriety I mean serenity and peace mm -hmm. these people in spite of a loved one who may be continuing in their addiction right in spite of catastrophic catastrophic consequences that's the definition of the disease mm -hmm. uh, and it's these are smart people it's like why wouldn't they take action uh, but in spite of their not taking action uh, 
the, per, the people in their life can have serenity and peace. You don't have mm -hmm. to have them take action for you to have that, but it's harder than it looks. Well, how do the meetings run, though? I mean, are you going to go in and sit in a circle, or are you going to have a lecture? I mean, what exactly happens? It depends it? on the size of the meeting. Some okay. You can, again, find something that's going to fit your needs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like to be really anonymous, a large meeting of more than 50 people, you kind of hide out a little bit more. Not everybody can talk. Small meeting of 12 mm -hmm. uh, to 20, somewhere in there, mm -hmm. you likely are going to talk if, if you want to. You'll have an opportunity. So uh, in a smaller group, it's going to be a circle. Mm -hmm. In a larger group, uh, there'll be more of a speaker and sitting in rows. Mm -hmm. uh, that, so you walk in, and uh -huh. is there like a leader, or how, how does there, that uh, happen? There's a leader. They're called the secretary of the meeting. Okay. Uh, there's also a treasurer. There's people. People take uh, service positions. Um, uh -huh. It's part of the uh, traditions, and uh, one of the steps is about giving back. That's part of how you maintain your own serenity. Okay. And so, so there'll be a secretary, mm -hmm. a treasurer. Is there somebody that kind of gets the meeting started? Yes. Do they introduce each other? I mean, how, how does that work? Right. That uh, people stand up. Okay. Um, Hi, I'm a codependent, or I've, I, they talk about their uh, qualifier. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going around circle, introducing himself, uh, how, many, how long you've been in the program. Okay. Uh, that addicts and alcoholics say how long they've been sober, mm -hmm. and uh, Al-Anon says how long they've been in the program, mm -hmm. because it's hard to measure sobriety in this program. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then do people just go around and talk about anything that comes to mind or do they have a topic? There's, or? It, it can vary. Okay. Uh, some meetings are more open that way. Uh, mm -hmm. There's open and closed meetings. Open meetings are ones where anybody can attend. Okay. Um, and closed meetings are, it's almost like invitation only, okay. um, as it were. And so by going to an open meeting, somebody may say, hey, this one's really uh, a good one, and you now yeah, have an now invitation, uh -huh. and uh, you can go to that. Um, some meetings are male-female, okay. uh, co-ed, and others are you know, male stag, or uh -huh. I don't know what do they call for female. Anyway, uh, women-only meetings. Uh -huh. And you know, so there's uh, quite a variation. Some meetings have a topic. Uh, okay. that uh, some will work through the, the steps mm -hmm. uh, or will use the traditions, uh, something as a jumping off point, and others are open. Uh, larger meetings will have a timer uh, where, mm. you know, there's a set time. For so that, how much you can share. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that you're not, you know, somebody who has just a lot on their plate mm -hmm. and really needs to be in their own therapy and they're not, right. doesn't monopol monopolize the group. So what if you're really not interested in talking i mean uh, do you have to talk at the meeting not at all not at all that it's uh many many people will go for quite some time mm -hmm. to just see what is this to observe uh, you're going to get something out of the meeting that observing means you're oh, it's sometimes called coattailing you're somebody yeah. else is working if you're engaged in that something's happening in you as well yeah and some have been in meetings that haven't spoken for over a year mm -hmm. um, but they're not showing disrespect nobody expects that right. that it's your program it's your journey it's a good meeting is not going to prompt you or say hey why don't you talk so let's say you go for a while you found a group that's not just complaining about their addict or alcoholic but they're really trying to focus on their own journey um, you, you know, what would be the next thing you'd want to do once you've decided on a specific group that you pro you will attend regularly? Uh, I don't understand the question is, what, well, I'm thinking, do you get a sponsor or what do you do? Gotcha. Because I know in Absolutely. AA you're supposed to have a sponsor. Absolutely. And I would say that sponsorship, uh, many people will go to meetings, read, uh, read the literature, but getting a sponsor is a big step. And uh, for addicts and alcoholics who went to meetings and didn't get a sponsor, and then I would see them in treatment because they've mm. relapsed, they said it was worthless unless they had a sponsor. So would you, you know? say the same yes, thing about Al-Anon? I would, I would. And what do you even look for in a, in a sponsor then? Uh, being able to identify with them, that there's mm. aspects of their story that resonate with you, okay. that they're speaking truth 
mm-hmm. that uh, you just you would approach them and say, would you sponsor? Are you taking sponsors? Are you sponsoring people? Are you right. taking sponsees? And would you sponsor me? Mm-hmm. And this is not unusual. It's it's part of the program, mm-hmm. part of the uh, whole thing. And in fact, people do this not because they're so generous or they think they should or there's no guilt in it. Mm-hmm. P- to be a sponsor means this helps me stay sober. Mm-hmm. That's Which in this case is off the focus off my Serenity addict. and peace. I maintain my serenity yeah. and peace by giving to you, b- reminding mm-hmm. myself of the turmoil and the the torture yeah. of watching somebody in such self-destructive mode and not acting. What does a sponsor actually do, though? I mean, why do you even need one? A sponsor is not a therapist, uh-huh. but a sponsor will often, uh, you would go to dinner with them, which you can't, don't do with a mm-hmm. good therapist, right. uh, that you, they can meet you in various places. They suggest... Um, there's uh, protocols for working the steps, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, you would, uh, to be searching and fearless, sometimes you think you have been, and a sponsor has been there ahead of you, mm-hmm. knows there's certain questions you haven't asked So they're yet. coaching you yes. through the steps. Yeah, prodding, uh, uh-huh. much like a, a coach in, uh, those who participated in sports know, right. well, this is as much as I can do, and a good coach will draw more out of you than you think you had. And then I imagine there's someone that when you find yourself struggling with not getting anxiously focused or you're afraid or something, you can give them a call. Absolutely. And they're going to certainly be a resource for you to get your focus back onto your own journey. Yes, absolutely. And that's the arrangement you have with Mm -hmm. them. So you don't feel like maybe it's a friend of yours that you call and now you think, gosh, I keep calling them, they're going to get tired of it. With a sponsor, that's the idea. Mm-hmm. You've it's kind of the unex, unwritten contract that I can call you uh, when I'm struggling, and um, you're not going to see it as an imposition. Right. Correct. And then once you're in the program long enough, you will most likely do the same for somebody else. So mm-hmm. it's the way that you give back uh, for what you've received. And so, uh, anything else you want to share about Al Anon before we close? Just um, feel the fear and do it anyway mm-hmm. is the title of somebody's book. But you know, just uh, don't don't let the uh, unknown uh, stop you from taking advantage of a great resource. Right. And uh, to to uh, give to honor the trauma you've been through mm-hmm. by getting into uh, a place where you can get some healing for it. Yeah, and I would say, you know, be go at least seven times mm-hmm. to a meeting before you rule it out. Now, once in a while you go to one and, and it, you know right off the bat, it's kind of like dating. You know right off the bat, this isn't going to be a good fit for me. Go to another one. Mm-hmm. Don't just rule out the whole program based on one meeting. Yeah. Good good suggestion. Yeah, keep, keep checking. Find the one that's right for you. And the other thing that can help you kind of get over that hump of even breaking the ice Mm -hmm. is to think, if I go, my loved one is more likely Mm -hmm. at some point to be influenced by my behavior. Mm -hmm. It's not a direct correlation, but we do know, and the research is very clear, that the resistance that the addict has to these things is a mirror image of the resistance that the family has. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do with our program here with Family Matters is help you change that outcome that you're going to take the journey ahead of your addict Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it will make it easier for your addict to follow through uh, at some point in time. Uh, If they never do, you will still have benefited Mm -hmm. yourself and your other family members Mm -hmm. regardless. If as a result of their disease, you get closer to God as you understand God to be, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Well, great. So we'll continue on with these little talks on different topics. And again, check your workbook for some suggestions on how to find a meeting and also how to keep your focus on your journey and off of your loved one's struggle with addiction. And we will move forward.